Paraxacum officinale is something we all know very well. Almost all of us encounter it on a daily basis. In fact, chances are that there is at least one of them to be found not more than a few feet from your front door. Many don't like Taraxacum officinale. Many spend an inordinate amount of time and effort trying to kill it off, but it just seems to be resilient and resistant to all that you can throw at it. Few appreciate its simple beauty. It goes by many nicknames besides Taraxacum officinale. Pig's snout, lion's tooth. When I was a child, we simply called them pee the beds. But you probably know it by the name dandelion. This hardy little flower is considered by many to be a weed, and it is the scourge of many a gardener, because you get rid of one plant only to have ten more take its place. But far from a weed, this little plant and flower has always had enormous medicinal and health benefits, and apparently it's great in salads. And if you care about the wild bee population, it might be a good idea to let the humble dandelion do its thing, because it is a rich source of vital food for bee, bees and other insects. Jesus' words in the Gospel about the wheat grain dying so that it can give rise to a rich harvest made me think of a particular experience I had with this little plant a few years back while on an eight-day silent retreat. Retreats are great moments when we clear the schedule to allow more diligent seeking after God and communicating with him. I find that often while on retreat, for me, the real breakthrough moments are not necessarily when I'm in the chapel praying, but after a time of prayer, when I will go out for a walk in God's great and beautiful nature. During this particular ret retreat, the focus for me on one particular day was how the priesthood I exercise on a daily basis flows from, is rooted in, and is identified with Christ, the High Priest. From a technical theological point of view, there is actually only one priest in our Catholic faith, Jesus, the High Priest. As the second reading today from Hebrews tells us, he is the source of eternal salvation. But he is also the source of the priesthood. Each and every Catholic priest exercises the one priesthood of Jesus Christ. Though I am one of many, many priests, it is not my priesthood nor theirs, but his, the Lord's. Neither I nor any of my brother priests will ever claim to be perfect and holy, but the priesthood of Jesus Christ, which has been given to us in the sacrament of holy orders, is perfect and holy, because it belongs to Christ, and it is a principal way in which he continues his saving mission in the church and the world. So what has all this got to do with dandelions? Well, as I walked across a large green field attached to the monastery where the retreat was being held, I happened upon a single solitary dandelion, which was now full of the white fluffy head awaiting a strong enough gust of wind to disperse those seeds miles away from that mother plant. As I approached on foot, I couldn't resist. I swung my foot like I was taking a penalty kick and hundreds of seeds were scattered to the four winds. As I walked on, I reproached myself for attacking the poor pathetic plant, saying to myself, why couldn't you have just left it alone? Did you have to destroy it? Then, in that moment, the Lord gave me a lesson. I didn't hear a voice, but it clearly felt as though Jesus said to me, I allowed you to crush and destroy this little dandelion 
but from that action will arise a hundred more. So too, on the cross, I allowed my priestly heart to be crushed and destroyed so that it could be reproduced in many priestly hearts down through the ages of the church. Jesus is the wheat grain that is willing to die so that something new and wonderful might result, a people saved, a harvest of souls brought into the heavenly Father's barns. When he is lifted up on the cross, when he offers himself to the Father for our sins and the sins of the whole world, when his heart is crushed with suffering and pierced open with a lance, when his lifeless body is placed in the tomb, then the seeds of the great harvest of souls begin to germinate and burst forth. In this gospel passage today, Jesus is teaching us that following him in this willingness to give of ourselves selflessly, we will bear much fruit for God's glory. Indeed, just a couple of days after the events of today's gospel passage, Jesus, sitting at the Last Supper, will say to his disciples, It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. My brothers and sisters, we are supposed to yield a rich harvest. We are supposed to be spiritually fruitful. But if we are honest, often we can scarcely seem to have any harvest at all. And we can feel sort of spiritually barren. For me, I know those barren and fruitless times in my life correspond to those times when I have stopped really pursuing Christ times when I have eased up on my commitment to prayer or have allowed myself to become lax or complacent in my decision to serve and give of myself in imitation of Christ who gave himself up for the good of us all. If a man serves me, he must follow me, says Jesus. And not to put words into his mouth, but Jesus might equally say, if a man wishes to be fruitful, if he wants harvest, if he wants to give God glory in his life and by his life, then he must imitate me. Back during that retreat, a humble dandelion taught me a great lesson about God's plan for my life and his gift to me of Christ's holy priesthood. And yesterday, once again, the simple dandelion did it again. When I looked up the correct botanical term for the dandelion, Taraxacum officinale, Google told me that it is known by two other nicknames also, monk's head and priest's crown. The reason it has these names, given to it since the Middle Ages, is because when the puffy white seed head has been blown asunder or kicked to the four winds by a passerby, the remaining part of the flower head resembles the hair tonsure, the bald patch on the top of the head which priests and monks of that era were given to show that they had given their lives over to the service of God and his holy people. My people, Please pray for me and pray for all priests that we might be more willing to imitate Christ in his willingness to undergo hardship, suffering and death for the good of souls. Like the dandelion head destroyed at the end of our lives, may we priests, if we have by our labours, by giving of our best, helped grow the Lord's harvest of souls, oh, may we be found worthy of a priest's crown. Pray for your priests. And we have been tasked by the Lord 
to do many things for you. But among those things, we are called to pray for you. So you pray for me, and I will pray for you. Thank you.